Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Winner's Ways podcast. This is where we help you to maximize your potential. And uh, today uh, we have a guest, Louis O'Connor, uh, who is always a founder of Strategic Metals Invest. So I'm going to be speaking with Louis today. And uh, we are going, all going to be learning about rare health metals. Uh, before we go into today's show, as required by law, all information that you are going to be hearing today is for information and education only. I'm not your financial advisor, nor is Louis. So we are sharing information based on what uh, Louis knows. So, hey, Louis, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bola. Um, hands across the Atlantic. We can shake hands. I'm in, I in like Europe that. and you're in. Yeah. <laughs> That's hands right. across the Atlantic. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. So um, I, I know you are the founder of uh, Strategic Metal Invest. Uh, can you just introduce yourself to my audience so that they can uh, know you better? Sure. Sure. So um Look, I, what, what, I, what I think I can promise, Bola, is your, your audience will be hearing about an investment class for the first time. Look, it might not be for them, but I think it makes, at the very least, an interesting, you know, anybody who's interested in investing, when they hear about something new, it's, it's of value, even if it's, you know, oh, that's not for me, or okay, I'm interested. So, so yeah, I hope I can deliver, um, you know, some new and interesting information and stuff generally that people have not heard before. Um, uh, as you know, I'm in Europe and this asset class was previously unavailable to private investors. It's only in the last 10 years it's become available. So I'll explain to you sort of briefly what it is, but feel free, if I say something that brings up a question in your mind, feel free to sort of interrupt me and ask me, um, because, you know, the, I want to try and give everyone a clear picture of what it is. And it's, it's um, anyway, I'll get started. So just to give people a good idea, right? Right. Uh, my company is called Strategic Metals Invest. Now, strategic metals is an umbrella term for technology metals, rare earth metals, uh, green metals, even rare earth elements. So when I say technology metals, you'll see there's about 12 rare earth metals in one iPhone. So they're in all modern technology. Um, they're critically needed in uh, electric cars for the magnets for uh, car batteries. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're also um, needed in solar energy, wind power, aviation, nuclear reactors, medical devices, you name it. Um, they pretty much power our daily lives. Now, until very recently, I mean, well, still today, the only end buyer for these products or these raw materials are industry buyers, right? So mm -hmm. there's no point in you or me sort of having, say, $100,000 worth of indium in a, in a safe in Texas or in, in Ireland, right? Because who are we going to sell it to? It's of no value to us. It's right. only of value to Apple computers, Siemens, BMW, Ford Motor Company, they have use for it. However, investors can profit from that by owning them and storing them. So it's very much the same paradigm as owning gold or silver, right? Uh -huh. People buy gold, there's, there's like $11.7 trillion in gold, uh, except Gold doesn't have a, a sort of an intrinsic value. These metals have an intrinsic value. Gold has an extrinsic, but we can talk more about that later. So just want to try and give your audience an idea of how the play works. It works exactly like gold. You buy it, you physically own it, you store it. And then when it's either gone up in value or when you're ready to liquidate, you sell it. So it's exactly the same as that. We offer you, the investor, 10 different rare earth metals which are critically needed in all modern technology and uh, sustainable energy. And you can buy them as an asset and keep them. And, you know, it's up to you. You own them. You can keep them for a year, three, five years. 
Now, here's the important characteristics of it. The first one, the most important one to investors is rare earths outperform gold. So I'll give you an example. For the last five years from 2017 to the end of 2021, gold went up 58%. So a little over 11% a year. On average, our metals went up 34%. So they're three times as they're delivering three times as much profit as gold for the last five years. There's a good reason for that, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, now here's the, I'll be quiet after this and I'll let you ask some questions, but here's the critical safety characteristics, right? Right. As I said, there's no point in me or you owning, you know, hundred thousand or million dollars worth of these metals mm -hmm. because they're only valuable to an industry buyer. So what people need to know about us is we are an industry supplier. We're based in Frankfurt in Germany. We've got more than 30 years experience. So what we do on a daily basis is we buy raw materials from producers, mm -hmm. mostly in China. That's what China is the dominant market leader in rare earths. Mm -hmm. And we resell them to industry buyers. Mm -hmm. We have more than we've clients in more than 70 different countries. Now, mm -hmm. why is that so important? Because if we weren't an industry buyer, we couldn't offer the investor a safe transaction. Right. Right. So what we offer the investor is one, when they buy the materials from us, they're buying industrial grade, high value assets, meaning, you know, purity levels, analysis reports, chain of custody. Because if, if Boeing are buying rare earths for a jet engine, they need to know exactly where they were produced, what the purity levels are, and everywhere they have been along the chain of custody, the supply chain. So we guarantee that because of our 30 years in the business. Okay. And um, the other important part for the um, investor is liquidation, the exit strategy. We also provide the exit because we have access to the suppliers. So when a client is ready to liquidate, they let us know. And usually in three to four working days, they can sell the metals, realize their profit and, and walk away, shake hands and be happy. Okay, that's good. Uh, thank you very much, Louis, for all those uh, detailed information. So when I got uh, the request from your assistant, Margie, uh, about this uh, interview, so I, I quickly did my research. Uh, I'm completely going to be open to you. Rare Earth Metal uh, is quite new to me in terms of investing. Yes, you, you mentioned Apple, Ford, Tesla. I know that all these companies, they use all, all these rare earth elements um, in their production. Uh, so curiosity was what led me to saying that, hey, yeah, let's do this so that I can talk. And of course, ask you questions so that my audience, you know, they can learn about this. And of course, um, if you, I don't know, uh, in the Europe, uh, what's going on right now in the United States, the stock market is quite volatile right now. Uh, and uh, I know most investors, they don't like the volatility. You know, you, you are not going to be happy to see uh, the value of your portfolio dropping, you know, like a rock like that. So uh, if we can offer them some diversification, I think this will be helpful. And yeah, out of my uh, research, I went to American uh, geosciences.org and here's what they wrote. They said, and I quote, rare earth elements are necessary components of more than 200 products across a wide range of applications, especially high tech consumer products, such as cellular phones, computers, hard drives, electric vehicle, and so on. So my question now is, if this rare earth metal is as valuable as it is. How come many people don't know about it? Great question. Great question, Bola. Um, well, you know, it's amazing that not enough people are talking about this. Yeah. Um, but the answer lies in the fact that, um, I don't want to say it's a closed industry, but um, 
we're the only, and, 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 I, and I can tell you this with certainty, like if something's my opinion, I'll tell you it's my opinion, but if it's a fact, I'll tell you it's a fact. Now, this is a fact. We're the only industry supplier in the world that offers this. Now, we've been in business for over 30 years, but we've only been offering this to investors for 12 years, since 2010. And I'll explain what we did was in 2010, our CEO, the founder of the company, um, you know, again, he's all, at this stage, he's over 20 years as a metal supplier. He basically being sort of an entrepreneur realized there's an, there's an, an additional sort of income stream or additional business that could be done here. And so in 2010, we bought what was a, an air raid shelter, a bunker uh, for shelter during World War II uh -huh. and converted it to a bank level secure vault. It's a, it's a Zolager, which means it's a tax-free zone, exactly like Switzerland or Singapore. So we bought this bunker, converted it to uh, you know, a, a secure vault. And since 2010, We've been offering investors, mostly in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, this opportunity. We, we've done zero marketing in English until six months ago. Um, because, you know, in between Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, there's about 100 million people. So that's big enough market to begin, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, and also in Europe, as particularly Germany. Now, I'm Irish, but in Germany... You know, it's very different to the U.S. culture of doing business. Things are much more conservative and low key and people <laughs> don't, you know, they don't tell you all about their investments and how much money they're making. And, yeah. I mean, a friend of mine jokes and I'm only saying this because it's true and it's also a little bit funny. But if you put an American and a European on a flight across the Atlantic, right, mm -hmm. when they get off the plane, the American will have told the European Everything. Everything. I, Everything. I quite agree with that. <laughs> right? Everything. Yeah. The European will have told them nothing. I'm, I'm talking about money and finances because yeah. it's not, the, in Europe, it's considered not cool to be talking about right. as much money. <laughs> than yeah. But look, I, I'm okay with both. I mean, I like to learn from people. So, so if somebody's willing to tell me about good investments, I'm all ears, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to just sort of illustrate the difference in the culture. So, so we've been doing this for 12 years very successfully, mostly in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Now, it wasn't exclusive to there. We, we actually had, a, we've already got about 200 American clients, but those clients were people who really worked hard to find us. I mean, you know, they really were into rare arts to find out who we were. Um, but what happened was we, we extended the um, uh, storage facility to three times the capacity it, it was, and we've now opened it up uh, to a bit more of an international audience. And we want to, you know, we want to welcome people from the U.S. I mean, I would say the U.S. investors are probably more sophisticated sort of than European investors, because I think people in the U.S. have had wealth longer. There's more of a variety of investment, um, it is, you know, asset classes and stuff. So we want to bring it to the U.S. And I think one of the key things one obviously is they're profitable you can you know people like gold well rare earths will sit along gold in your portfolio very comfortably but also it offers geographic diversification um, mm -hmm. if i have all my money or all my assets in one country and in one currency i don't really have any i don't have true diversification you know if mm -hmm. i have 10 different asset classes but right. they're all in one country Right. I don't have diversification because they're all in one currency and one country. So this is a nice opportunity for people who maybe are already into precious metals to uh, add to their portfolio at a profitable asset class and, um, and, and create some geographic diversification as well. Okay, so that's good. It's good that you mentioned the storage because, you know, again, out of my curiosity, I was wondering, oh, so today, let's say, I decided to buy some uh, uh, rare earth uh, metals. How is it going to be stored? Where am I going to keep it? You know, if I'm buying stocks, I just go online on any uh, stock exchange platform. I can buy any company that I want. 
Um, I think the same uh, is applicable to gold. I can transact gold online. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's physically stored somewhere. So you are explaining that you guys have uh, some storage somewhere. Yes. So if an investor should buy, uh, is uh, rare earth metal is stored maybe in Germany uh, for them. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And that's, um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because the storage is a very important part of the safety as well of the transaction. So mm -hmm. in our, at the moment in our inventory, we've over 200 metric tons of rare earths. Only about between 20 and 25% of that inventory are investor owned. So the ratio of investor to our own inventory is about 20, 20 to 80%, 25 to 75. That's very, very important because again, if we weren't an industry supplier, we can't provide the exit. If we didn't have buyers every day in over sort of 70 different countries, we couldn't liquidate the product. So it's very important that we're part of the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody who offers you rare earths and is not an industry supplier, all they are is a sales and marketing company. And that doesn't work because they have you have to liquidate the product, right? right? Now, something key here that sometimes people have a little bit of a challenge sort of getting their head around is um, why store them with us in Germany? If you own the metals, why not move them to the US or mm -hmm. Switzerland, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing is you can, you're part, you own the metals. Once you've paid for them, they're yours. If you want to move them to Dallas or to Houston or to Singapore, you right. can. Yeah. However, we don't recommend that for one reason is you're going to add a lot of costs to your investment. So our delivery price, if you will, is to the vault in Germany. If you want to move them to the US, you're going to have to pay for transport and you're going to have to probably pay import duties. Mm -hmm. And crucially, if you keep them, say, for five years and then you come back to us and say, I'm ready to liquidate my assets, mm -hmm. will you buy them? We'll say, yes, we'll buy them. But if they haven't been stored correctly, they might need to be retested, which means more expenses for you. Yeah. So, so that chain of custody is very important. So what we recommend to our clients, once people have done their proper due diligence, they understand this and they, you know, if they've come to see the vault, say, and they, they see all, you know, once they know that we're for real, right, mm -hmm. um, then it makes sense because when we – like we're an industry supplier. So when we store them in our, the, the vault is a sister company of us, right? Mm -hmm. When the metals are stored there, the chain of custody hasn't been broken. So, you know, if Boeing or Apple or Siemens or whoever is buying, they want the materials in the original packaging from the producer, which shows the purity levels, the analysis reports, the complete chain of custody is there. Otherwise they won't buy them. Right, you know, right. because it, because it, those materials might be going into a computer or a jet engine they can't in any way you know risk you know say gallium not being 99.999 percent sure so uh, yeah. that chain of custody and the storage is important so we can liquidate them quickly and easily like if you were one of our clients bola and you what you said to me let, let, louis i want to sell my battles next week we would send you an offer on monday if you accept the offer you would have uh, the transaction will be finished in three to four working days. So you'll have your money by the end of the week. Okay, that's excellent. I like the way you explain, you know, the storage, the chain of custody, and of course, eventually liquidation. Uh, that's uh, crucial. I think one other thing that many people would like to know is uh, the safety of their investment, right? Uh, I know you have uh, lots of uh, FAQs on your website, strategicmetalsinvest.com, but I, I want to hear from you. Uh, let's say you have a client here in the United States and uh, they purchase their rare earth uh, metals uh, and they store it with you. How are they sure that their investments, their metals is kept safe for them? Okay, good question. Um, and very, very important. I mean, all investments, you know, in one sense are a speculation and, and, and a part of that is safety and security, you know? Mm -hmm. So look, the most important thing is due diligence. I mean, it's due diligence is not a just a theory or a word. Like I could send you all, 
or sample documents, if you will, which shows um, the legal imprint of, of the company. So you'd be able to, with an attorney, research how long we're in business and you know tax returns. Everything is on the, the open uh, registry. So, you know, another, what I recommend to clients, if they can, is to fly over to Frankfurt so I can show you them the vault, show them the office. So my sort of answer there, first of all, is don't make any investment, whether it's in rare earths or anything, until you're, or if, unless you are 100% sure about the people that you're doing business with, unless, if you have any doubt Mm -hmm. if you're 99 percent sure don't do it i think you must be 100 percent sure that because you, you're basically becoming a partner with somebody so it's like a marriage you know i mean mm -hmm. you're going to this relationship is going to last three or five years you have to be certain you know this person or this business is who they say it is yeah um, and we are i mean look i mean I, it's easy for me to say that but People have to do their due diligence. What I all I can guarantee today is, if people do their due diligence, they'll find out the vault is real. They can come see it, and I'll show them. And I'll I'll take them on a you know a, a day trip to Heidelberg, and um, you know I meet my clients tra clients that travel from overseas. I make time to spend a few days with them as well. But but um, it doesn't sort of matter what I say now, except people do have to do due diligence, and if. And when they're 100% confident that everything is correct, only proceed then, you know. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean um, that still leaves, you know, all that means is you're comfortable with who you're doing business with. The next part of that question is, um, you know, what could go wrong? And, you know, in terms of, you know, you're, you're investing because you want to appreciate capital. Right. What could prevent that happening? And what I will tell you is, um, supply and demand are in charge when it comes to rare arts. They're not correlated at all with the stock market. Um, we do have a scenario right now where demand is much greater than supply. That's likely to continue uh, for the next three or five, possibly 10 years, because you know there's so much demand for electric cars, solar power, wind power, so much demand for you know, um, modern technology, so all across the board, like, just look at it this way, Bola. Ford Motor Company, BMW, all these big, big conglomerates right now are setting up their own. They, they wouldn't buy from us, by the way, because, you know, they buy in metric tons. But they're setting up joint ventures and supply chains directly with producers in China for their own supply. So they're taking a big chunk of the market. So what's left is what's available for investors and industry suppliers, you know? So um, what I would tell you is there's always a risk, but once you've done your due diligence and you're comfortable, then after that, you just sort of have a, you have to, I suppose, have a little bit of faith, you know, at some point you have to jump off the cliff and, and see where you land. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Um, which maybe not everybody wants to do. I, I think in, the U.S. people have a little bit more of an appetite um, for investing and, right. and for risk. Um, although rare metals are low risk because you're buying from an industry supplier. There's huge demand out there. The only risk is how much they will go up in value or not. That's all. You'll, you'll be able to liquidate them anytime. So, yeah, you, you mentioned quite a number of things. And, uh, you know, thinking about it, uh, these rare earths, uh, they are in limited supply. That's what I've heard. And um, demand is uh, greater than supply. Uh, but, you know, we always need to balance uh, our risk, uh, you know, whenever we want to invest. So uh, I want to talk about uh, volatility. I, I don't know, uh, none of us can see the future. You don't know where the price is gonna be, uh, maybe three, five years from now. But of course you've been in this business for uh, decades, right? So if you look at a price, uh, maybe four or five years ago compared to now, how, is, how does the uh, price for these uh, rare earths, how do, how do they fluctuate? Uh, the, the, the reason is just to give my audience some insight sure. into volatility. Sure. 
Well, um, you know, anybody who, you know, might be interested in talking to me, I can email all of this stuff sort of, um, in, you know, independently. But like for the last five years, investors have been doing very, very well. I mean, a um, couple of reasons. I mean, demand is constantly increasing for these for these raw materials, you know, um, and supply is limited. The reason it's limited, and a lot of people don't know this, this is a real interesting part of it is, um, in, the, in the 1980s, the US produced 60% of the world's rare earths, and China produced about 12, 15%. Today, China produces more than 80% of the world's rare earths. And then crucially, the, they refine more than 87%. So China is the com completely dominates this market. Wow. There's only one producing mine in the U.S. in uh, California Mountain Pass. And even whatever they produce there still goes to China to get refined. Mm -hmm. Because refining rare earths, it's a very complicated scientific sort of mathematical certainty, you know, issue. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. And China has about, China's about 30 years ahead of the rest of the world. So what's happening right now um, is... Well, it hasn't happened yet, but if, if somebody cares to do their due diligence, they'll see that in, if you look at China's futures policy, which is anybody can see, they, they released it in the beginning of 2000, and it was entitled China 2025, and their goal was to be domestically self-sufficient in 10 different technologies. They're about to achieve that in rare earths, and what that means is sometime between now, let's say 2025 and 2030, China will completely domestically be self-sufficient. So what that means is the West, Europe and the US will be sort of, you know, with waiting with their hand out for what China will give to them after they fulfill their own quotas. Just to give you an idea, two of our metals doubled in price last year alone. And coincidentally, or not coincidentally, at the same time, China doubled its production of car, of electric cars last year. So what happened was China needed more raw materials for their own production. So right. they, um, they didn't um, release um, any more and, um, and the rest and the prices went up. So, but sorry, I didn't answer exactly. Just to give you an exact answer, if you'd invested $100,000 in rare earths five years ago, you'd be up 175%. So you'd be up to 275 in five years, between about 35% a year. That's that's a fantastic return, uh, I must say. So uh, now let's say there's someone out there, uh, they are hearing this, uh, listening to, to this uh, interview. If they want to invest uh, with strategic metals invest, how do they uh, start the process and, you know, walk us through that, please? Okay, so um, they don't buy them. I don't want to complicate things, but Strategic Metals Invest, my company, we're um, a sales and marketing company for Tradium in Frankfurt, the metal okay. supplier. So they're actually buying them directly from Tradium. Mm -hmm. And I'm an agent for Tradium. Tradium outsourced their sales and marketing to me internationally because they want to focus on what they do 80% of the time, which is buying, buying and selling metals, you know? Mm -hmm. So what it would happen is if, if somebody said, I want to invest a hundred thousand or 10,000 is the minimum investment, by the way. Okay. Um, That's good. Let's say somebody said they want to invest 10,000 or 15, then I will through me, they'll, they'll do it through me and I will, um, ask Tradium for an offer and they'll receive an official offer from Tradium with, you know, the, the weight, the purity levels, the analysis, the exact, you know, material they're buying. Um, and once they accept the offer, then Tradium would send them an invoice with wiring instructions. And then they send, they fund the money directly to Tradium in US dollars. And then they'll receive the certificate of ownership. It takes about 30 to 60 days for the metals to arrive. And once they arrive, then they go into storage. But it's very simple. It's very straightforward. Um, you know, the US and Germany have um, what they call friendly nation status. So 
Right. There's not there's not a huge criteria or you know um, there's not unless you're investing over a million dollars you don't have to jump through hoops to make the investment. In fact, all we need for somebody to invest is their name, their home or record address, uh, phone number, and email. You know that's all we need to get started. Okay, uh, so that's good. Uh, on a final note, uh, Louis, uh, if my audience, uh, whenever they want to uh, start this investment, uh, can you please tell us how they can connect with you? I know uh, maybe your website, strategicmetalsinvest.com. Uh, are there other ways uh, that people can connect, engage, and learn more from you? I think you guys, you offer strong training also uh, as well. Uh, you have webinars uh, on your we website. We do, yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah, well, look, um, look, if there's anybody who, you know, is sort of when you release the, the podcast, anybody who wants to contact me directly, they can. It's uh, Louis, L-O-U-I-S, at strategicmetalsinvest.com. Or if somebody just wants to maybe investigate a bit further now, if they go to the, as you said, the, the website, Strategic Metals Invest, they can download a brochure there for free. And if they leave their name and their phone number and email, then I'll, I'll usually follow up or one of our people will follow up with them. And then, you know, if they have questions or, you know, want to investigate further, we can do it, you know, we can take it from there. But yeah, email me or go direct to the website is, is the best. Awesome. So finally, can you tell us why people should start investing in rare earths today? Well, because it's profitable. You know, pure and simple, the, the, you know, I have all the independent, you know, like, for example, when I said to you, um, they've gone up 35% a year, that's, I can send a, a report from Bloomberg. It's not from me. It's not me, you know, um, and also other independent sources. So look, it's very, very profitable. It's once you've done your due diligence, you'll see that it's also very safe. It's low risk. Once you, you know, once you take your time to really get to know, that we are a metal supplier that again we're not just we're not a sales and marketing company we're an industry supplier and if we weren't an industry supplier you don't make this investment you know i mean there are i heard there was one company from london and one in the us about eight years ago offering what we offer except they weren't an industry supplier and as far as i know it didn't end well you know so do your due diligence um, you know, that's, I think, the most important thing. The first step is due, due diligence. And then once you're comfortable, um, take it from there. But, yeah, I mean, again, for, for discerning investors, all they want to know really is, can I make a profit? And, yes, they're profitable. Thank you. And that's where we are handing it today. Uh, thank you again, Luis, for joining us. Uh, it's been an awesome, awesome uh, time with you. Uh, lots of information that you've shared with us. And uh, I have benefited a lot from this. I know my audience too, they will find this beneficial. And guys, if you want to find out more, please go to strategicmetalinvest.com to learn more. Thank you. Thank you, Bola.